Hola, eh, gracias. Eh, estoy muy contento de estar en Las Vegas. And now I'm going to start to speak in my Neanderthal English, so please stay calm. I'm going to try to do my best. My name is Sebastian, and I work at Anagrama. It's a design firm um, from Mexico. And this is some of our work. Just to give you an example that I am not a total stupid. So we work this for Rihanna, the new logo for Armani, other little projects that I love, etc. Architecture. We're a team of almost 40 people, and we do work for clients all around the world, from Croatia to, I don't know, Colombia, what, uh, Brazil, a lot of different places. We started this six years ago, um, and it, it was in Monterrey. Monterrey is not Mexico City, and Mexico, it's a super centralized country, so it's the only important city, Mexico City, and we are not from there. We are from the most irrelevant points in the fucking planet. What happens in Monterrey really, really stays in Monterrey. <laughs> I should recommend to change that Las Vegas thing, because nothing, uh, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm trying to do my best. Uh, so Monterrey is to Mexico City what Marseille is to Paris. Monterrey is not a touristic destination. This, there is no Mexican magic on it. This is not Monterrey. This is not Monterrey. Not Monterrey. Not Monterrey. Not Monterrey. Definitely not Monterrey. Monterrey is an industrial city, tasteless, boring, gray, etc. Uh, this is Monterrey. It's horrible. <laughs> this is Monterrey as well, but it also is this. Um, so we have this uh, municipality that is like the richest municipality in Latin America, or whatever that means. Uh, and so we live in this like clash of two different uh, worlds, um, like between the slums and the, I don't know, this Monaco thing <laughs> or whatever. Uh, this is our office, pretty cool hipster office, whatever. And this is outside our office. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I don't have an amazing curriculum compared to everybody else. I was a problem child with ADD. I was the worst at high school, awful grades in college, king of absences, fired from my design job in 10 days. Uh, and also, I am not that passionate about design. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But it was super hard to choose a major because I was only 17. Uh, and I have these options at the time, like film, industrial, architecture, everything. And so I picked graphic design because it was the easiest to get in. <laughs> so there was no physics, no need to relocate. And it looks like a safer career option compared to music, for example. It's been 13 years since I decided to study graphic design and I still can't decide what to do with my life. This conference is called Going Fast to Nowhere, and it's gonna be very fast because I only have 20 minutes, so I'm gonna be, it's gonna be hard for me. I'm gonna be a mix like the Fresh Prince with a Neanderthal or something, it's gonna be hard. So this lecture is for people who don't feel are particularly passionate about anything, and don't have any particular talent. <laughs> it's also for people disorganized, chaotic, and sloppy. And, but this lecture is for people who want to do as many things as possible because YOLO. <laughs> I really believe in this. We only have one chance to do everything, so this is the one that we have. And so I'm going to talk about my personal projects, my side business, and obviously Anagrama, my, my studio, and how, to make, and how I make the, the things move forward. Um, this is an overview of the projects in my life at this moment. So I have my main business that is in Agrama, side businesses, and personal projects. Some of these projects are in their initial stages, some other are advanced, and some other are up and running. And I'm not the leader of each one of them, but I'm happy to be aboard. Sometimes I am just seated in the back seat. Uh, I think that, that working for creatives, with creatives is amazing. I think that some creatives like me are, are not motors, we are like turbochargers. And, we, and I believe that as a turbocharger that I am or whatever, uh, 
I need, I need to be connected to a real uh, engine to do things. On my own, I can do nothing. But when I connect to real uh, like adults or people with actual skills, <laughs> is when the magic happens. As a turbocharger, uh, I realized that I had to stay connected to motors. Yes, I have to say this. And yes, collaborating with creatives is an amazing thing. Everybody talks about it. But I really prefer, I love the idea that somebody else on Earth loves to open the fucking Excel. And I prefer that. I prefer collaborate with people with totally different talents uh, that, that do the things that I don't want to do. And one of the talents that I have is that I really, uh, that I know that I really need help. <laughs> a lot of help, actually. So, at Agrama began today, uh, I found someone to put order into, into my chaos. Uh, Gustavo is an industrial engineer. This is the, the coolest photo that I found of Gustavo. Uh, <laughs> and at that time, I needed someone to code the website for my freelance clients. And the more I worked with him, the more I realized how important his skills were. And it, were not, it, 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 it wasn't about coding. I found out that the fucking money was important. So this guy really uh, understands how the money works. And, and he's like, it's amazing having an adult working inside the studio. And he takes control of all the, those things, legal and stuff. So I invited him to open Anagramma. Um, I knew I was a good designer, but I wasn't the best. And so I called Mike. Mike, in my opinion, amazing photo of Mike as well. Um, Mike in my, is probably my favorite living designer. It's amazing. He's very obsessive, very detail-oriented. Um, and these are some examples of the work that we have made uh, together. This one is called Amado. Amado is a bakery uh, boutique at the Hyatt Hotel in Mexico City. And it's inspired by the modernist uh, architecture uh, style of Luis Barragan. He's an amazing Mexican architect. This is the kind of things that he was doing. Um, and so we, we, we love his vibrant palette. And also, we like uh, a lot the, the palette from Mexican textiles, like this one. And also, mixed with this kind of 80s pop culture um, patterns like this one. And so we ended up uh, mixing these three concepts together. And this was the, the result of it. People in Mexico believe that Mexico is the owner of colors. So if it has a lot of colors, people say, like, oh, this is super Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> and so we use that. Um, so this is called Sofia. This is another project. Uh, it's a residential and, co and cooperative building in San Pedro, the municipality that, uh, that I live in, inside Monterrey. And so it's the richest one, as I told you. And so this is surrender. The building is already there. Uh, our task was to communicate lux luxury and sophistication. And we were um, very tired of this super simple, modern kind of design. And so we choose to pick more uh, like fashion brand style. It's important to say that we make this long time ago. I don't know, like four years maybe? I don't know. And so, well, we, we, we look at the municipality coat of arms. It's horrible. It's like, just look the, the draw of the lion. It's totally wrong. And so we choose some things uh, inside of this coat of arms that we liked. We really put an effort on it. Uh, and so uh, also we developed a custom typeface uh, based on Eric Gill's typefaces. He's an amazing designer. And also, we reference all text, diplomas, and all that shit that right now it's a little bit overused, but at that time was the newest thing ever. And so we mixed these three ideas, and the result was this. Uh, like a clash between modern and old stuff, we use the, we make this typeface, um, and it looks super beautiful with this like kind of old uh, diploma kind of things. Everything is in, in the website. So you can, more stuff. I, I love this one. <laughs> but well, 
Um, I don't have that much time. So Bermillon, is, uh, it sells extreme hot, hot candies. It's, it's obviously ridiculous everywhere in the world. But in Mexico, people love it. They look like this. I, don't, I, I am not part of that people. <laughs> I mean, I don't like them. Not the Mexicans, the candies. I like Mexicans. <laughs> And so as any other project, we start looking for references and blogs, books, magazines, whatever, everything. And we choose some kind of typefaces that we liked. And then we look for similar Mexican products that were obviously awful. <laughs> and our goal was to transform this cheap uh, product to a, a high quality delicacy. But we really got stuck on the project because it was super hard for us to mix those worlds. And we were out in, like, in a break smoking in that street that I show you. Ah, probably there is a picture. And then a, like, a street vendor passes by. This is a common thing in Mexico. And then we have this amazing idea. So we take the colors, because Mexico is the country of colors. Uh, and then we decide to, to use it, to use them, sorry. This is like the outside of, of our office. <laughs> and there's a lot of, graf of, of like revolution kind of graffiti in, this, in, in Mexico in general. And so we mix these three concepts, like the revolution uh, graffiti with the European typeface with these colors that, is, that are super like acid colors. And so the result is, is this. So it looks like sleek and beautiful and everything, but at the same time, it looks like it's going to be sour and probably hot as well. Um, so this thin line between the favelas and Pseudo Monaco, the two Monterreys or whatever, or Mexico, um, this office inside, this office outside, helped us build our own approach to projects. I know that. It sounds esoteric, but this clash helps us to reboot ideas and just um, like getting out uh, to outside of the project and enter inside of this um, pretentious kind of brands that we need to develop involved around this kind of weird uh, scenario that we live in. It's I believe that that it works for us. Uh, and Mexico, obviously, is going to keep providing us with that constant clashes forever. <laughs> so after a couple of projects, um, we got the chance to do uh, an interior design project. And we invited Roberto to collaborate with us. Amazing photo, Roberto, as well. And so he's a great architect and a friend of mine since childhood. And he's now a partner at the office. And so we developed some projects that involve architecture. And this is one of them. It's called Conarte. Uh, it's a space to promote reading in children, avoiding the traditional horrible library concept, like this. Um, and so we, we, we really wanted to avoid that because I was a problem child. And, and for me, that was like my, uh, this was horrible. So <laughs> we took uh, Monterrey topography. Probably this is the only beautiful thing about Monterrey. We have amazing mountains. And we found inspiration as well in the skate parks. And the building that we, where the library is, it's an architectural landmark. It's a, like a super old factory that needed to be untouched. So we have to work with that restriction and at the same time play with it. So this is the sum of the variables that we, that we pick. And this is the result. So we make this super futuristic kind of a thing, um, clashing with the old building. And it's totally reversible. If somebody one day says, OK, let's throw this away, the building is intact. And so the kids can go around, pick books, whatever. It's a little theater. And so a few months ago, Anagrama got a, uh, got a new partner. She's Dani, amazing picture. And she's very graceful, but she's, she's also a sergeant. So she's in direct contact with the whole staff and the studio and is in charge of hiring the, 
best people that we can get. Thanks to these amazing partners, Anagrama works like a tag chip. And working for brands, on brands for clients are amazing, but sometimes I, I, I would love to be more involved in the project than only just the, the logo or other things. So the, it's, it's regularly uh, limited, obviously, because it's just the project scope. And so there are a limit for the input. And so I started to look for opportunities to get it more involved in other things that I was interested. And so this is our, some side businesses. I just, I'm gonna say only two because of the time. Some of these projects are in collaboration with Anagrama Partners, some others are not. I love this one. It's, this is a cliche because I'm a Mexican with a taqueria, a taco place. But I really like this thing. Not every city in Mexico has a good taco joint, and my hometown is one of those cities. Uh, so we were worn out with this super branding everything that we, that we make. And so we decided to reverse our approach. And probably that's why this project, we will never be in, in our website, because it sells the opposite thing that we sell. So we use inspiration that lacks creativity and like the worst possible places on earth to look for. In Mexico, um, um, the most delicious taquerias are the ones that have the worst branding. It's like a rule. <laughs> so, when, and we really wanted to, to, to be very, 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 very true to those values about being amazing, <laughs> not being ugly. But well, it was the price to pay to, to get real or whatever. So instead of having a, an amazing concept and elaborate and trendy, we choose the opposite. And we decided to follow the traditional taqueria. Uh, and also, it was a good moment because all this horrible thing that is called normcore that everybody loves except me is happening like this. Uh, and so we it's like the post-hipster thing or whatever. So we picked. Uh, this super stupid taco design with this kind of normcore aesthetic, and we just, ah, and this is an amazing thing. I get involved in the actual recipe of the tacos, and I really enjoy that thing because I am, I'm, a, I'm a foodie, I'm a fat, and I really love food. <laughs> <laughs> I can probably speak more about tacos than design, but, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> So, well, I, I get involved in the, the design of this. I, I always was jealous about America, and it, it's not because of the economy and all the amazing things that you guys have. It's because the burger have French fries, and tacos don't have French fries. It's just fucking tacos. And so, <laughs> and so we designed, or whatever, it's pretentious to say designed, but I, we are in a design congress. So we designed these potatoes. Uh, <laughs> They are like deep fried, uh, it's, they are like french fries, but they don't look like. So they, they look very good with the tacos, and obviously they taste amazing. And so, this is the mix of the things. Uh, and probably this is the ugliest logo that I have ever made in my life, but I love it. I fucking love it. <laughs> yes, it's horrible. <laughs> I just went to India, and it was a little hard to present this logo there. <laughs> it's horrible. Yes, it is. I love it. And the more I see it, the more I love it. It's, it's like when you're in school, and you, and you get this classroom with not hot chicks at all, but at the end of the semester or period or whatever, you kind of fall in love with one of them very deeply. <laughs> it's the same thing. So it expresses the character a poorly located taquero, obviously. It's just a huge accident itself. The typeface is sloppy. This is the worst thing on earth. And I love it. I, I, I feel relieved. Um, so the slogan of this thing is Higiene, Calidad y Servicio, which means Hygiene, quality, and service. Super stupid. <laughs> but when you see this, and if you are Mexican, your taco radar like, starts to blip. Like, oh, probably this place is going to be a good place. 
So this the design is horrible. This is probably the worst design of the whole Congress. It's just, there, there's nothing in here. But I love it. I love it. I love it because it's about the, the, the dip. It's not about just the look. It's about making like perfect things and a more uh, cultural, uh, connective um, way that, in my opinion, sometimes design it's just superficial. And this was an amazing um, moment for me to make a little celebration about probably the best thing on earth <laughs> that is that are tacos. And so this is it. We have four minutes. It's going to be a tough one. Okay. This is a chocolate uh, project called Manos de Cacao. Hands of Cacao. It's, uh, so we're going to make chocolate bars from scratch uh, from every corner of the world. And so this is, this is an amazing project because it's sustainable, socially responsible, delicious, creative, everything that I am not probably, this project is. Uh, because, the, uh, because the bean origin is always changing, the packaging uh, is going to change as well. And so it's going to work like a canvas, it's going to be amazing, just believe me. No. Um, and so it's going to look like this. I'm going to go fast because I need to finish. So yes, it's going to be beautiful and sustainable and everything. And so these are just a couple of personal projects that are, they look uh, even more, uh, they are not yet happening, but I believe that it are important to put here, just to give you an example of how these things start and then they became real. Um, so this is called Norris, it's just a, work, it's a working title, uh, but it's a fashion brand that I want to do. Uh, it's inspired by simplicity, but simplicity is a little bit tricky because it can be very dangerous if you oversimple the brand because it could become brandless. And if it's brandless, then fast fashion can replace it in a second. So the visual concept is based on language, on everyone, everyone's language, like the language of the different parts of the world. So we blend it in a unique alphabet. Um, I, I believe that it speaks about the moment that we are living and the world that I want to have, a world uh, more connected, more mixed. This is, this is on the work. It, I don't love it yet, but this is how it starts. And later on, it's going to be beautiful, etc. So the beautiful thing about this is that we can use it as a typeface and on paragraphs and stuff, and we can also use it as a huge pattern thing on clothing. We can do almost whatever we want with them. Ah, yes, it looks. So this project, for example, is in a very, very initial phase. Uh, I have nothing, just this idea. And obviously, it can get super tacky with huge logos, so everybody can uh, use it as a symbol of power or whatever, just like the big brands. Um, Mm -mm -mm. So this project is still in a very, very early phase. Um, I'm still looking for the right team to, to, to make it happen. Like every other project, I, I, I really need help. I cannot do it on my own, obviously. Um, and so this is the last one. And there's nothing to show you. Just it's going to happen. I'm going to film a movie next year. <laughs> this is real. And I'm super happy with it. It's probably the biggest project that I have now. It's going to be a death metal teenager love movie. Uh, and so I love it because I'm using the same like design process or something to do it. And I'm also using amazing people that are 10,000 times better than me to, to make it happen. So we have founded this via Mexican government because we earn a, scholar, like a scholarship or something. I don't know how to say it. Like a, a prize that works, <laughs> okay? So um, it's gonna happen. And the conclusions of all this thing is you don't need what to do in your life. Uh, you can do whatever if you, are, if you are teamed up with the right people. And here's what I do, what I look for, sorry. So I look for energy. It's amazing uh, that people 
when you find people motivated, they help you being motivated. Never, never, never drag anyone or try to push him. If they, if, if they aren't into the project, just leave them. Diversity, like I say, partnering with your best creative friend is not, maybe it's not the best idea if none of you knows about business. Most of the time it's amazing to have actual adults taking care of the serious things. Uh, share. Sometimes letting someone else to be the leader, it's, be it, it's, it's better for the project. Some of us are turbochargers, not motors. Some of us. Principles, uh, different talents, but the same values, believe in the same kind of things. Uh, so everybody push in the same direction. Um, skills, respect the expertise. So if, if that guy only knows one thing, but he's a genius doing it, I really, really respect that, and, and I believe that he deserves a share of it just because he's like Mozart. Uh, and trust, this is a tricky one in, our, in my culture but it's the most basic uh, value in any human relationship. Without trust, it's impossible to, to share a project. And I still don't know what to do with my life, and I still don't have a direction. This, uh, this were my options when I was uh, 17, and I am doing everything right now. Uh, but I know that with the right people, I will have more fun and get there sooner. Going fast to nowhere. Thank you very much. You're pretty busy for a self-described lazy person. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't buy that you don't care about design because you care about it so much. Yes, but uh, I mean. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you, let's pick this apart. What do you mean when you think you're not passionate about design? I, I don't buy the idea of the character of me being this designer that wants to be designer and post on Facebook about how designer he is and memes about, push memes about being a designer. I love Metallica more than El Helvetica, you know? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> That's totally fair. But I love Helvetica as well. <laughs> the thing is that I, I, I cannot, I'm not that passionate about any in particular. I love a lot of different stuff. Right. That's my I mean, very clearly, you love a lot of different stuff. Um, how is it possible that you sort of put together this life for yourself where you get so many options? I mean, is this, are you ever worried about not doing one thing the way you want to do it because you want to do 27 things at once? Yes, I am not doing nothing in the perfect way. Yeah but I'm doing a lot of things quite good. Yeah. That's the way I do it. I firmly believe that. Yes, yes. That you should if you struggle, if you try to go for perfection, you'll never get anything done, you'll never be satisfied. And also I believe that you, I don't really choose, it's how I am wired. Yeah. Like, there are this kind of designers that are amazing working alone, and, and I am not like that. I am the opposite. And so I need amazing designers to do things. And if I take care of it, like by myself, the results are not going to be that amazing as well. I mean, my, my partners in Agram are amazingly skilled, for example, or the movie or everything. Mm -hmm. And do you always um, generate these ideas and bring them to your partners, or your partners sort of bring them to you? Like, how, does that, how do the ideas sort of function? Like, who brought up the taqueria to begin with? <laughs> Probably I can take credit for it. Yeah. I'm a cheerleader in leather jacket, but that's my thing. <laughs> Just cheerleading things and, and find amazing people to work with. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Sebastian Padilla. Thank you. Thank you.